Greetings misadventure enthusiasts. It's time for the grand finale, the bonus content for Gretchen's Misadventures episode 12, Queen Mab's Castle. In today's video, we're bringing you an exclusive end of season interview, offering insights into the magical misadventures we've shared. As we bid farewell to this incredible journey, we're also unveiling a final character illustration that encapsulates the essence of our beloved characters. Join us for a heartfelt conclusion to a magical season. Today, we're lucky enough to have the infamous Gretchen Mirkwood here at the studio to give us an interview following the events of her misadventurous series. Let's give her a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. So Gretchen, it's been a while. How's the new potion shop coming along? Thank you for having me on the show. The potion shop is shaping up pretty well if I do say so myself. The candle maker drove a hard bargain, but after having Jürgen come around to inspect the place, he was more amenable to negotiating. I'm still really getting things set up as I'd like them, but with the help of Nelly's cousin, Gustav, I'm still doing a decent trade. Sounds like a lot of hard work. I'm guessing you don't get to spend a lot of time at the Sultan Bog these days. Not as much as I'd like, no, but at least Jürgen has Nelly around to keep him in line. If you didn't know any better, you'd probably think those two were an old married couple. I think they're the only two people who can't see that. It might be a little too soon after the minnow whatever, but I can see those guys having a happy life together. And how's Piper doing at the academy? Putting the rest of them to shame, she is, and it's no wonder with her nose always stuffed in a spell book. Those witches over at the cooperative that I sponsor are really taking her under their wing and showing her how to enchant a bunch of stuff. Her confidence is improving with spellcraft, and I'm pretty proud of her. Nice. Did you ever get that ever-burning hearthstone that was mentioned at the end of the last book? Sure did. It's keeping the cauldron at a nice simmer at the shop, and it means the cottage is still warm when I get back to Edgewater. Not that I'm there much these days. I've got a cot up in the loft which I use during the week, and Mulligan prefers city rats to the vermin back home. So Nora was right when she said you should be living in the city? Ugh, not likely. She doesn't know if she's coming or going out running errands for the Witches' Council. Last I heard, she was hunting down some cursed spoon in the mountains. She's a lot happier these days, though, and is laying off the hard stuff, if you know what I mean. Good for her. So after following so many of your adventures over the past couple of years, I'd like to ask you some questions about them, if that's okay. Ugh, here we go. The puppeteer is pining for the strings, huh? Well, maybe. We've missed hanging out with you. Tormenting me, you mean? Oh, come on. It was a lot of fun, wasn't it? Which parts, exactly? Getting thrown in the dungeon? Having to save the day with my bodily functions? Reanimating zombies? Losing my hat? Having my cottage burned down? Hey, you were more than a little unruly on the page. And in the end, it turned out just fine, didn't it? Hmm. If that's how we're going to spin it, I suppose so. So you're telling me that you don't miss crazy adventures? Maybe. But if you pick up that darn quill again, can you at least take me somewhere exotic where there's a lot of cocktails? Deal. Now what were some of the highlights for you over the past 13 stories? Ah, well, let's see. I suppose I would never have met Piper if the Krampuses never showed up. And I couldn't imagine life without Jürgen, I guess. I'm still trying to figure out how the heck I managed to enchant that one. Nora quitting her job with the Baron was great until she moved into my place. But of course, finally catching up to Great Aunt Esme was really the icing on the cake. Have you and Cordelia been in touch with Esme? Sure, we must annoy her, as the whole time thing is different in Fairyland. But every Friday, I head over to the Academy to share a double distilled witch's brew with Cordy and scratch a message or two to Aunt Esme. It's nice. If anyone had told me I'd be drinking with my sister a year ago, I'd have never believed it. Do you think you would have done anything differently in the stories in hindsight? Absolutely not. Regrets are for saps. I'm not going to say everything happens for a reason, but I wouldn't be where I am now if I'd have made different choices. And what's next for you? I should be asking you that, but while you're off scribbling other things, 
I guess it's really a matter of restocking my stores of potions and trying to figure out how to remake my infinity pouch on the side. Elod thinks I'm daft, but he's at least agreed to try to find any mention of such an enchantment through his networks. What's the use of an infinity pouch if all you're doing is selling potions? Are you kidding? That pouch was the best thing I ever owned. You know how annoying it is lugging things around on a broomstick? Those witches at the cooperative haven't figured out how to make those horseless carts or whatever they'd envisaged. I doubt they'll ever really be a viable method of transportation, particularly outside the city. And paying someone to haul carts is a real pain in the neck. Fair enough. Have you caught up with anyone from the stories since the series wrapped up? Yeah, a few. I've taken Piper out to meet Vera a couple of times, but his idea of accommodation in that tower of his is a world away from creature comforts. When summer rolls around, we might go out camping for a few weeks, though. Oh, and Rapunzel sent a coupon to the shop for one of her tallest tower spas. I don't have the heart to tell the girl that no amount of pampering will reverse gravity in my case, but it might be nice to get away for the weekend sometime. Hmm, who else? Still no word from the Tooth Fairy realm. From what I can piece together, the fairies over with Esme are working to open up the portals, so I hope to see Tula again someday. Of course Gavin is still doing an impressive trade in glowing silver, and the elves are pretty happy working with him. Wow, seems like you've been busy. It's amazing what a witch can get done when she isn't thrown a curveball every couple of weeks. Point taken. Finally, have you got anything you'd like to tell the fans out there? Fans? If I knew I had those, I'd have looked into merchandising. Hey, maybe if they're in the city, they can drop into Mirkwood Medicinals, and I'll give them a good deal on wart serums or boil busters. I'll even autograph their receipts personally. <laughs> Very generous of you. Well, it's been really nice chatting with you today. I'd love to tell you that I'll leave you alone for a while, but I get the feeling there's a new story brewing in my mind set in this little shop of yours. Man, I should never have agreed to an interview. I need a better agent. And there you have it, folks. Let's hear it for Gretchen Mirkwood. <laughs> and in this final illustration by Rod Savely, we have Gretchen embracing her long-lost Aunt Esme, we hope you enjoyed the end-of-season interview, the reflections on the magical misadventures, and the touching final character illustration from episode 12, Queen Mab's Castle. If you've been with us on this magical journey, thank you for your support. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell for more enchanting adventures to come. Until next time, may your days be filled with magic, mischief, and the joy of fantastical storytelling.